I'll follow you through lifetimes if I have to. Moth to a matchstick. Ignite the past, one match at a time, and discover if love can withstand time as fleeting as the matches you light. Can you rekindle a lost love in the shadows before the flame fades away forever, forever? Ah, yes, ghosts and romance. Perfect. <laughs> Just a moment. Greetings to mouth to a matchstick. It just appeared on my little game timeline, whatever you call it, but ew, another game. Something of a premise that's been done but could have no twist of some kind. Then it seems something maybe wholesome, lighthearted, supernatural, romantic fantasy isk. Listen to that. That soothing start to it. <laughs> so, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. What shall I name? Obviously. To be Sophie Clock. Oh, goodness. Someone has overfilled that pot. Please come get your cooking. <laughs> I'm a little scared. A log cabin stands cold and desolate, nestled amongst the skeletal trees of a barren landscape. Ooh, I'm just realizing the little roses that are lining the text box. Pretty! A log cabin stands cold and desolate, nestled among the skeletal trees of a barren landscape. It is time-worn walls are barely visible underneath a thick blanket of snow, as if nature itself is attempting to erase the structure from existence. It's fitting for your situation. Inside, the air is frigid. You shiver, your breath visible as fleeting clouds of mist. <gasps> the little dragon breath. <gasps> you rub your hands together for warmth before moving about the room, your feet dragging on the cold floor as you begin your daily ritual. You wrap yourself in a worn blanket and trudge towards the fireplace. A meager pile of logs rests nearby, a testament to the many lonely nights spent within these walls. Are we trapped here? Is this a snow inn or what? I didn't. The synopsis didn't make it out to be so scary. I need more firewood. Making a mental note to restock, you turn your attention to other matters. As unappealing as food sounds right now, you know that you need to get at least something in your stomach. Ooh, have we been sick? Ah. You had enough weighing on you. Malnourishment didn't need to be added to the mix. Okay, I'm curious of what the predicament is. It's getting me a little freaked. But it's like you're indoors. But how? How much longer? Hmm. With practice hands, you prepare a simple stew for the weak flames. The palatal bits of dry veggies and the meat offerings little flavor or fulfillment. The scent of the cooking food mingles with the musty odor of damp wood, creating a familiar yet oppressively suffocating atmosphere. Yeah, damp wood, especially it's not like son sauna, like wood, like supposed to meant to be. Give me that crispy but like musty dodor odor. Ugh. This routine. It's all you have left. This sucks. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not that bad if we're saying this sucks. But then again. Mm. Oh, is is that the bubbling pot that we see over there? Cause that does not look appetizing. I was already scared the first time we saw it. As you stir the bubbling pot, a look of resignation crosses your face. The doctor said you didn't have much longer. 
and it wasn't hard to see how accurate their predictions were when you looked in the mirror. You know that each passing day brings you closer to the end, yet you continue trapped in your own isolation. What is happening to our character? We're death sentence when we're living in this s abandoned cottage? What? <laughs> Unless we've chosen to live out our last days as independently as we can? Maybe? Ah, isolation that you chose. Look. Gazing out the frost-covered window, you can see snowflakes drifting from the heavy gray sky. Your eyes, once sparkling with life, now stare ahead. Dull and empty. But as lonely as it is, this was for the best. You didn't want your family and friends to see you like this. So weak. So pathetic. But you're dying. In, in an abandoned place, essentially. And even the very fact of then, do you expect someone to come collect your corpse afterwards? Because that's going to wreak even worse, even if you're in a cold location. <laughs> and so, one night you packed a bag and left, running off to an old family cabin that you alone had access to. It was far away and obscure enough to make sure no one could track you down, not at least not easily. Anyone else who did know of its connection to you had passed and soon you would follow suit. It was fitting, and the macabre soared away. You move away from the window and begin tidying up the cabin, your actions slow and detached. Each movement feels like a chore, weighed down by a crushing loneliness that has become your constant companion. Yes, you had chosen this life, but that didn't mean you had to like it. You can't even remember why you keep doing this. Why bother maintaining the upkeep of a place you had come to die in? As you sweep the floor, your thoughts turn inward, reflecting on the life you had left behind and the decisions that brought you to this desolate place. <laughs> and an all too familiar inkling of doubt wriggling into your mind. One that urges you to just give in and go back. Back to the warmth of those who couldn't even bear to face when you received the diagnosis. It was so tempting, so easy, and your desperate heart fluttered in your chest like a moth drawn to the flame. Oh, this is some stressful times for us. Clearly we want to go back, clearly we feel like we should, but it's like... We have our pride, our dignity, maybe how we feel about our family maybe we have a lot of guilt but like we have a family cabin but it's like we're not eating good quality or anything we're kind of ticking down the seconds your grandma but then you remember your grandmother how she had looked in her final years as she lay in her deathbed and now the sinking pit you felt in your stomach she you watched her slowly Loosen her grip on life grew into a vow that you would never inflict the same pain on someone else. I mean, as a society as a whole, we'd kind of make people brutally live when it's like you could let them go. It is always a constant struggle of life and death. I mean, I know, personally me, I don't want to be comatose. Like, for a certain amount of time, I could not be a month or more. As much as there's a possibility of coming back, I've seen family members not come back. And it's just, it just messes with you. Psychologically. But again, preferences. Because for one, we don't know what else about her grandma. We don't know what her illness is. But I mean, she's stubborn, she's in... She figured out how to get to this family cabin, so... Bravo! Even if that means you need to hurt them in other ways. But yeah, because right now, where... Everyone's concerned where you disappeared to. Make the few people I care about watch me turn, turn into... Into this, or 
run away and just live waiting to die? Why does it feel like no matter what I choose, I lose either way? Your hands tremble slightly as you grip the broom handle tighter, attempting to hold back the tears that threaten to spill over. You carry on with your chores, each task completed with the bare minimum amount of effort. The buzz of a dying old alarm shocks you from your moping. Dinner's ready. You ladle a humble portion of the watery stew into a small bowl and take a seat at the empty table. As you eat, you listen to the wind outside. The icy gusts howls fill the silence. An old window creaks and bends on its rusty hinges, threatening to burst open at any moment. You gather up your dishes and ignore it. I guess it's time to put things in order. Although you had stayed there for quite some time already, you never bothered to fully unpack. You figured you wouldn't need to, given how little time you had left. Settling down your roots seemed pointless. However, boredom had driven you to look for anything to keep yourself occupied in the meantime, and so cleaning and unpacking this old family cabin had become your 9-to-5 job. Opening an unmarked cardboard box, you begin to sort through your belongings, organizing books and baubles meticulously. Your movements are slow and lethargic, weighed down by fatigue. At the least, when you're gone, no one will have to clean up after you. Our character seems to have had some issues, like boundary-wise and not feeling important enough. <laughs> I feel so sad for them. But then, you, you feel sad, but then you feel like, wow, you really left home. That is still brave. As you fold your clothes and arrange your meager possessions, you cannot but reminisce. With each knick-knack you put away, a new memory resurfaces. Awkward college parties, sleepless nights after studying, impromptu hospital visits brought on by you and your friends' stupid 2 a.m. stunts. You pause for a moment, staring at an old Polaroid of happier times you had absentmindedly picked up. A bitter taste filling your mouth as it sinks in that you can never truly go back to those times. No matter when ever you stay or leave this cabin, you shake your head and swallow hard, setting the photo aside with a heavy heart. This is for the best. There's nothing left for me back there. You've become a stranger in your own life, an empty husk going through the motions, disconnected from the world around you. With your daily chores completed, you sink into a chair. The exhaustion evident in every line of your weary face, and the slick sheen of sweat on your shallow skin. Congrats, Selfie Clark. You've done the bare minimum. Hooray! You talk to the empty air, donning a fake smile and throwing your hands up in the air. Your voice is laced with mocking sarcasm. The bitterness of your mouth is now rolling off your tongue as you rant to an audience of one. You should feel proud of yourself, Selfie Clark. At least you can die in a chic, aesthetic cottage. Oh, now all you need is some fresh, freshly fallen scent. Now all you need is some freshly fallen snow scented candles to mask the scent of sickness. Now that's what I call a happy holiday getaway. Ha <laughs> ha. You stop, finally losing your breath and snapping out of your hysteria all the yelling and thrashing, you're left to catch your breath in a numb silence. Was this really what you'd become? Finally, you allow yourself to crack and feel the full extent of your loss of hope, your eyes filling with unshred tears. It seems that no matter how much you insist to yourself that you've accepted your fate, part of you can always tell that you're lying. After all, how can you expect someone to just lay down and accept that they're going to die? Well, 
most of the time when it's anime and then you're telling them to die, they're either gonna go off the flip side or even get isekai, and it just depends. Cold wind howls outside the log cabin, the only sound accompanying you as you sit in silence for what feels like hours. The creaking window frame has begun to shift ever so slightly, allowing the cold to sneak in and chill you to the bone. You shiver involuntarily as you wrap yourself tighter in a threadband blanket. It's never been this bad before. You glance around your desolate surroundings, the dimly lit room casting eerie shadows on the walls. The once roaring fire in the hearth has been reduced to smoldering embers, barely providing any warmth. I really need to get more firewood. But what's the point? The window panel falls ajar as powdery speckles of snow flutter through the growing opening. As you sit there, your thoughts drift to memories of laughter and conversations in the similar setting, a bit cozier. Your traitor's heart gives you another pang, and before you can bite down and swallow your sentimental urges, a confession falls from your lips. I wish, I wish someone was here with me. You almost felt selfish to say. Thick tears blur your vision as you stare into the dying fire, the flickering light reflecting the loneliness etched on your face. Even just for one last goodbye. A sudden gust of wind finally blows open the window, snapping you from your pitying thoughts as a flurry of snow shoots into the room, killing the last remnants of your fire. You rise from your chair, wincing at the cold air biting your skin. I get it, I'll close you, stupid window! As you reach for the latch, you pause for a moment, gazing out into the vast, barren landscape. The endless expanse of snow and ice feels to you like a cruel reflection of yourself. I really am pathetic, aren't I? Turning away, you reach into a nearby drawer with a sigh, rummaging for something to reignite the hearth. Your fingers brush against something flimsy, and your curiosity is piqued as you pull out an old container of matches. The box is covered in dust, its once vibrant colors had faded with time, but it looks surprisingly intricate for such a basic household necessity. Where did these come from? I could have sworn there was nothing in here when I cleaned out this drawer yesterday. You take a closer look at the matches. They look old. Really old. Old enough that they would probably crumble away if you held them too tightly. I get being prepared, but this looks so old. It's probably more of a fire hazard than an emergency tool. How did I miss these? Intrigued, you open the box and find a handful of matchsticks inside. You run your fingers along the coarse tips, eyeing the still dead hearth behind you. It's probably best to leave these be, but I'm really cold. You pause. Second thought, what if I catch on fire or something? These things are shredding everywhere. Your fingers tremble slightly as you pick up a matchstick. Examining it, your uncertainty growing with each passing moment. You stare at the small wooden stick, weighing the potential consequences in your mind. There's no harm in trying, right? You grimace as you walk to stand over the fireplace. At least, not much harm. With deep breath, you strike the match against the box and a small spark leaps to life. Perfectly normal and strong. What? <laughs> Before you can breathe a sigh of relief, a giant flare bursts out, nearly causing you to drop the match as its unnatural radiance shocks you. Flame sputters violently before stabilizing, 
causing an eerie glow across the dim room. Hi. <laughs> so, I didn't realize if the game was going to be from our perspective or this person, but hello, hi. <laughs> Tendrils of smoke seep out and curl around the match, quickly making their way down your arm. You stand there, frozen, despite the inferno that sits between your fingers. All you can do now is all, all you can do is watch helplessly as the smoke races down your body and jumps into the hearth in front of you, pulling suit in your face. Finally, you manage to move your body, feeling your legs buckle beneath you. When the sensation of the cold floor slamming into your knees doesn't come, you allow yourself to open your eyes. A man stands over you, one hand holding the matchstick you had thrown and the other cupping the small of your back, keeping you suspended mere inches above the hardwood. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie Clark, falling for me a bit early this time around, aren't you? He grins at you with a playful smile. <laughs> oh my gosh, nah. <laughs> Choices. Oh wait, that's a load. My bad, my bad. Let me put that. Turn. I mean, for game, in game me, I should push him away because out of game me knows me significant. So we'll do this. Yeah, we'll do that. I think you dropped this. He pulls you to your feet and slips the matchstick back into your hand. You flinch at the burning heat of his touch as his hands rush against yours. This isn't right. This isn't safe. Who the hell is he? What the hell is he? You'd always wondered what type of person you'd be in a situation where you felt cornered. Turns out you're the fight var variety. Get away from me! You push at his chest, slapping his hands away with frantic movements. You don't even care that you're still holding a small fire between your fingers. Honestly, maybe that was better. Another weapon in your favor. <laughs> the man flinches in shock before regaining his composure and giving you a soft smile. Both hands up as though in surrender. Easy now. We wouldn't that to fall, would we? He nods his head to the matchstick in your hand. His body language is tense, though he tries to mask it behind nonchalant shrug as he straightens up and tries to dust himself off. However, he only seems to make himself look more, as, more out of place as his hands fall through himself, semi-transparent. Sensing your gaze, he <laughs> awkwardly coughs and gives you another sheepish smile. So, about the introductions. You continue to stare at him, speechlessly. Your grip on the matchstick tightens as you struggle to make sense of the situation. I'm Claude. You're a ghost. You're a ghost that comes to take me away from this place. <laughs> okay. He doesn't seem to be anything of a grim reaper, or anything of the death gods, or anything that's escorting you out. I mean, he has a handkerchief, and... Does he have a mole in his chest? He does! Okay, anyways. Hello, Claude, as my character freaks out about you being a ghost. I guess you're technically right, but... Cutting Claude off, you begin to ramble, paying him no heed. I'm dead, I really did, it just finally happened. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dead. <laughs> Selfie Clark. Pulling you from your hysteric spiraling, the man of smoke and fire grips onto your shoulders, the heat of his touch grounding you, if just for a moment. Selfie Clark, I know this is a lot to take in. Honestly, I don't know how anyone could see all of this. He motions to himself in the matchstick. And handle it well. So I get your reaction. But if you give me a chance to explain, I can try to help you make sense of all this. You stare back at him, numbly, regarding 
regardless of your current thoughts of this clawed figure, hyperventilating and passing out was going to do more harm than good for you. And so, all you can do is permit yourself to nod back weakly. Thanks. His expression and grip on you softens as he takes a step back, allowing you some room to breathe now that your balance is stable. So, yes, it's true that I'm a ghost. I've remained here for centuries, shackled to this land and tangled in the loose threads left behind from my past life. Loose threads. He lets out a heavy sigh. His shoulders slump with a sort of unspoken weight. And you finally notice how tired he looks despite his ghostly appearance. But then... You lit the match. As you process Claude's words, you glance down at the burning match and back up the flickering apparition of a man, realizing that it's the flame is what brought him forth. Your heart races as you contemplate the implications of this newfound knowledge. How the hell did he... From the matchstick? I mean... There is a many of items that store people, ideas, dreams, thoughts, all this stuff. And of course, for the sake of storytelling, striking a match. You, Selfie Clark, you finally came back and freed me. You were imprisoned or because no one used this? What do you mean? Sorry, came back me? You shake your head, still trying to comprehend the situation. Yes, you. We, see, we knew each other centuries ago. What? Claude sees your expression and rushes to continue explaining. I get it, you're confused. Our connection is something from another time, another life even. We died, and you reincarnated while I... while I stay behind here. I... I just couldn't let you go. And when I thought about the chance to connect with you again, I... As selfish as it was, I took it. He brushes his fingers against the matchstick's flame, as though in a trance. I don't know how or why this box summoned me. But the moment I saw the opportunity, your face staring back at me through the smoke, I leapt at it. I just, I just wanted to see you again. Your heart aches involuntarily at the look on his face. Sounds insane, but you can't help but feel invested in what he has to say. You clap a cold hand to your cheek, trying to push past the sudden wave of sentimental... You clap a cold cheek to your You clap a cold hand to your cheek, trying to push past the sudden wave of sentimental sentimental sentimentally sentiment mentally sentimental you clap a cold hand to your cheek, trying to push past a sudden wave of sentimentalness that had- uh, I hate this word. What is it? Sentimentally. You clap a cold hand to your cheek, trying to push past the sudden wave of sentimental that had taken- overtaken you. Snap out of it. Oh, dang, we could be mean. I don't want to be that mean, but I'm curious about which choice. But, I mean, obviously, like, I think you got it wrong. I don't want to be obnoxious. Let's go with this. Yeah. Look, sir. Claude. He gives you a shy smile. Seems forced made more so in an effort to comfort you than anything else. Claude, 
what you're saying sounds horrible, and I'm really sorry about your, well, your situation with being dead and a coast and all, but I, I think you have the wrong person. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I think it might be the best for if I just, we move to blow out the matchstick. Wait. Claude passes, pa or not passes, Claude pauses for a moment. Seemingly trying to decide on his choice of words. He runs a hand through his hair and groans in frustration. Ah, screw it. We're, we were lovers, all right? A few past lives ago for you and a couple centuries for me. Lovers. Right. I know it's difficult to believe, but it's true. We knew each other then, and our bond was strong. Fate, however, had other plans for us. Yeah, no, none of this seems believable in the slightest. You ponder Claude's words, your fingers unconsciously playing with the edge of the matchbox. You look at the burning match in your hand, its flames continuing to feed into Claude's form. But maybe I should be a little bit more lenient about what's believable right now. With a deep breath, you slowly nod, your disbelief gradually giving way to curiosity. Alright, Claude. I'll play along for now, but just know that I'm not fully convinced yet. Claude smiles gently, appreciating your willing, of a cautious optimism. That's all I can ask. A chance to make things right. Yeah, about that. How exactly do you plan on making things right? Let's just say that, hypothetically, I am a reincarnation of your partner. What can I do? I have a life and memories of my own, none of which feature you. However, whoever you loved, I'm not them. Not in any way that matters, at least. Claude looks down, a smile a bit more bittersweet at your words. Trust me, Selfie Clark, I know that. I've spent centuries fearing this exact situation. However, I didn't just appear to make you play along with some nostalgic delusion. I think our suffering is linked, and if we work together, we can both be freed from the cycle. What are you talking about? Selfie Clark, death and reincarnation aren't the only things that have separated us. And even now I can see that something weighs heavy upon your spirit. Even if you're not the same incarnation of the person I fell in love with, something about them haunts you. And if I'm correct, the same misfortunes have plagued your previous lives as well. What are we getting on with? Is this story or is this based upon the tale? I'm curious now. <laughs> you have hooked me, story. Because for one, yes, you have. A very hot ghost guy. And I mean, he looks dashing with a handkerchief. And he's been very chill about his introduction. Hasn't been rude. Has been very calm and collected and put together for his words. Even though our, our person's kind of in the midst of dying... They are concerned with our well-being, and they are just delighted to be in our presence. To have to wonder where this ends, I mean, I don't know, I'm assuming it's bittersweet, so I have to prepare my heart. But still, the atmospheric music, the cozy cabin, and talking to someone who apparently knows our character, the background, the pain, the worry... The longing. And if love can overcome everything. I'm excited. I gotta peer back in a moment. Even if you're not the same incarnation of the person I fell in love with. Something about them haunts you. If I'm correct, the same misfortunes have plagued your previous lives as well. Like, have we been dying prematurely? Or just having not a fulfilled life? Because now the question is, 
how is this reincarnation bit affecting us in our past feelings? Meh, we'll find out. Tell me, why did you come back here to this cabin specifically? True, I mean, besides it, you said it was remote and whatnot, maybe there's fond memories here. Well, it's a family cabin. I'm the only one left to take care of it. Okay, but you said there was like memories here and photos you looked at earlier. You nervously fiddle with the hem of your sleeve and avoid making eye contact. Were you really willing to tell this ghost that you were dying? You weren't sure. I mean, that's really... <laughs> That's another layered conversation. Like, so you, you're looking for your past lover. I'm about to hit the bucket. <laughs> like, well, got a lot to unbag. Yes, but why did you come here? You arrived here recently, out of the blue and seemingly running on instinct alone. I know a person who's running from something when I see one. I mean, trying to outrun death. <laughs> That's kind of a big one. Kind of significant. I... 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 Sounds like a save time. Kadoosh. I mean... Me as in the player. I mean, might as well. I mean... It seems the logical at this point to just be like, yeah, I'm running because of death. You swallow hard, doing your best to push down the nerves that have bubbled up inside of you. You had thought you were past this, that you'd come to terms with what little time you likely had. I... You were wrong. After all, how could someone ever accept that they were dying? You look to Claude, desperately trying to find a way past the subject, but for once he already, but for once he appears steadfast in his decision, he wasn't going to back down, not here. I got sick, the doctors, they, they said I didn't have much time left, I couldn't face them, my friends, what little family I had left, I didn't want them to feel like they had to just Stand around and watch me die. Claude wipes a stray tear from your eye. One that he had not realized had escaped. His warm touch dries a... His warm touch dries. Why can I not read English? His warm touch dries away the trail it left. And so you left. And came here of all places. It was the first place I could think of. He pauses. I'm sorry. I really am. I mean, that's... Either way, it's pretty bummy. Be like, hey, we meet finally, and you're about to leave again. <laughs> he softened up again. But you can't find in yourself to talk about this anymore. You shake your head motioning him to move on, continue like nothing happened. He hesitates and nods his head. Exactly. I'm not the only one with unfinished business. I think I can help free you of this burden if you help me do the same. And I believe the key to that is recovering your memories. Although it won't be easy. You nod your head. Dumbfounded, like it or not. It wasn't like you had anything better to do than sit around and wait to die. If there was even a minute, a possibility that you could change things to ease the pain you'd never asked for, you take it. Claude nods back, and his expression morphs into one of resolve. Now, we don't have much time. I can only stay for as long as these matches, matchsticks. Ugh. Now, we don't have much time. I can only stay for as long as these matchsticks burn. Once they run out, so does our time together. He 
You glance at the matchbox in your hand, feeling its weight, surprisingly light. Your eyes widen with alarm, the urgency of the situation sinking in. Eight matches. That's... that's all we have? How am I supposed to make sense of all this in such a short amount of time? We'll just have to be strategic about how we use them. With each match, I'll try to guide you through the events of our past, so that the memories may return to you. Once they do, well, I think by that point you'll understand what needs to be done. You hesitate, gripping the matchbox tightly. And if I still don't remember after all the matches are gone, then at least we tried. I have faith in you, Selfie Clark. He looks back at you, noticing your grip on the matchbox, and his face softens again. And I understand how this all seems outlandish, but I wouldn't lie to you about something like this. You must know deep down that there is a truth to what I'm saying. Your eyes meet Claude's, searching for any hint of deception. There's a growing pang in your heart, as though it's reaching towards him. The sensation fades just as quickly as it appears, though, and you're left with a hollow ache in its place. How can I trust someone I don't even remember? Memory is a complex thing, often buried beneath layers of time and experience. You just don't remember me yet. You gaze into the flickering fire, your thoughts whirling with uncertainty. Can I really trust a man who claims to know me better than I know myself? What if it's all one big elaborate dream? Yet, there's something inside me that feels a strange sense of comfort with him. I, I want to trust him. You clench your fists, feeling torn between skepticism and hope. Hope? You blink. Hope was something that didn't let yourself feel in a long, long time, and yet... With a deep breath, you try to quell your doubts and focus on the task at hand. Alright, I'll trust you, Claude. Let's unravel this vis- Alright, I'll trust you, Claude. Let's unravel this mystery together before our time runs out. Not like it's already isn't for me. Claude smiles softly, sensing your resolve. That's the spirit. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, great pun. <laughs> As your fears begin to subside, you take another deep breath and prepare to face whatever challenges lie ahead. You gaze out the cabin window, the cold and barren landscape reflecting your uncertainty. But maybe that too would fade away to something brighter. You, you turn back to Claude, an inkling of nervous hope flickering within your eyes. What if, what if we start with something small, anything really? He looks at you hopefully. Um, but I'm sorry, it's just, I, I really don't remember anything. You rub your temple as if trying to coax the memories to the surface. It's alright. Memory can be a fickle thing. Perhaps my memories can jog yours, but... Where to begin? You bite your lip before thought comes to mind. How about a story from our past? Simple and sweet. Claude nods thoughtfully, his eyes lighting up with anticipation. That's a wonderful idea. Let's see. I remember a time when we were strolling through an apple orchard in late summer. As Claude begins to share his tale, you listen intently, trying to picture the scene in your mind's eye. The scent of ripe apples, the warmth of the sun on your skin, the laughter filling the air. You desperately seek any fragment of memory that might connect you to this shared history. With each word that falls from his lip, you're drawn in deeper, 
missing puzzle pieces of yourself that in the back of your mind you had always felt were missing begin to find their place again. For once in your life, in this life, you felt almost whole. I, I think I can see it. That's it. Keep focusing. Remember the love we shared and let it guide you. Okay, let's take it a little slower than that. Right, right, sorry. So, as you were saying? Yeah, yeah. Where did I leave off? We were... No! Ghost man, don't fade away! Oh god, the music changed too. The impending flickering of the match, which... Can it apply if the match is technically not all the way disintegrated yet and we could just put it in the fireplace? But of course. The rules of magic, of course. Suddenly, the cabin seems to hold its breath as Claude's figure flickers and fades. His eyes once vibrant and full of life now hold a touch of fear that mirrors your own. Wait, Claude, what's happening? Claude's voice comes out restrained, as if struggling against an unseen force. I, I don't know. Wait, the match. As Claude continues to disappear, you feel a growing trepidation in the pit of your stomach. You finally look at the match to get hand, and you realize how weak the flame has grown. It had seconds before it go out, assuming that one of the cabin's stray drafts wouldn't kill it first. Panicking, you rush over to the matchbox you had left in the drawer. Digging your hands into the matchbox, you pull one out, holding on to it like a lifeline. Maybe this will help. Curiosity and doubt war within you. This match could bring forth memories and long-forgotten memories and emotions. But which ones? Claude depends on the might. Claude depends on the match's flame to appear. At least that's what he told you. If he was right, then that meant you could end this at any time. Turn your back on these supernatural conspiracies and die in relative peace. But you didn't want that, did you? You stare at the matchstick, pondering the consequences of lighting it. If I light this match, will it bring you back, Claude? Will it show me our past? You looked up, desperately seeking reassurance from Claude's fading form. I could be wrong, but it's worth a try. If it doesn't, though, then Sophie, I... No! Oh, wow, that was cool, the little... He gives you one final smile, but before he can finish his confession, he too is snuffed out, just like the flame of the matchstick you hold. The smoke is carried away by a stray breeze passing through the cabin's walls. The last remnants of the ghost who had looked at you so warmly. The dead match slips from your hand, tumbling to the floor below. And with that, Claude is gone. You take one step back, and then another. Then on the third, you bump into the chair behind you and fall into it. That was... A lot to take in. One part of you still feels like you were dreaming, or at least... At least hallucinating the whole thing. A handsome guy comes out of a match claiming that we're lovers in a past life. <laughs> yeah. That's way too good to be true. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. You laugh at yourself and how ridiculous you must look right now. Your eyes land on the matchbox. Eight matchsticks. Eight chances. There's only one way to find out if you were losing it or not. No sitting five feet away from you. I'll come back to you in the morning. Promise. It was getting late. If Claude really was real, you'd prefer not to be half sleepy when you're talking to him. Time was precious after all. With that, you do your best to resume your interrupted routine. 
grabbing a small bite to eat before turning in for the night. Sleep never came easy to you. But now that you'll... Sleep never came easy to you. But you know that you'll definitely need it tomorrow, regardless of the outcome. Eventually, after a good couple of hours of tossing and turning from nerves, you fall into an uneasy sleep, dreaming of sunny apple orchards and a boy whose fantastical stories keep you glued to your picnic bag. And a boy whose fantastical stories keep you glued to your picnic blanket. You don't remember the last time you had such a nice dream. And let's look around at these posters. The star, we can do it, kiss, gato. It's like, wow, dang, I just realized we had a, some kind of ivy set up. Oy. And all the medicines in the corner, things that kind of messy, but still comfortable sort of room. Isn't the tower, well, I mean, like, based upon tarot cards, I should look that up. But anyways, when the sun rises, so do you, but despite how surprisingly pleasant your sleep was, the nerves eating at you were stronger and so you found yourself begrudgingly rolling out of bed. You fall back into your routine, although a bit more aware of your surroundings as each chore and task is lightened by the thought of seeing the man in the matchstick again. You unpack, eat, and clean until you finally decide that it's time. Walking over to the drawer you had left the matchbox, you pick it up and pull a matchstick out. You move to stand in front of the hearth as you you move to stand in front of the hearth as your heart hammers in your chest with anticipation. You lift the matchstick, ready to strike it into flame and enter the unknown. You hesitate for a moment longer, fear and anticipation coursing through your veins, a testament to the love that once was and the memories that awaited you. Maybe you still needed to find out. No, you needed to figure out the truth. Here goes nothing. You bite your lip and strike the match. As the flame dances in the darkness, shadows come to life on the cabin walls, creating a theatrical atmosphere, and you're transfixed on its glow, your heart pounding with anticipation. Claude has returned! Your eyes widen in surprise and disbelief as Claude rematerializes before you. Claude! Selfie Clark? I can't believe he's really back. I'm not losing it! <laughs> so I'm not dreaming. Okay, good to know. Speaking of things I need to know, I need to learn more about our supposed past lives together. Claude, let's get right back into it. We can't afford to waste time. You're right. You look like you already had something in mind. Ask away and I'll do my best to answer. Say, <laughs> dang, we could actually really just be like, mm, never mind. I mean, he did kind of explain that. The fact of... Well, technically, he kind of explained in the way that he didn't want to let go of us, so maybe when we reincarnate, it's harder to remember each other? I mean, shouldn't we ask how did we meet? Or maybe I should just do a save. Uh, I'll put a save here. First four taken care of. How did we meet? That would be the best one, I assume. Tell me more about us. How did we meet and fall in love? Claude smiles softly, a distant look in his eyes as he recalls your shared history. Believe it or not, this place used to be a lively and close-knit village. One that we both lived in, it was, um... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to think. You nod sympathetically. It's okay, I... 
say take your time, but you know. <laughs> Laughing awkwardly, you look away from his gaze, eyes wandering around the room until he speaks again. Right, it was surrounded by rolling hills and vast fields of wildflowers, and the winters were white, but never freezing. A place where the time seemed to stand still, and your neighbor might as well be family. You listen intently, hanging on to his every word. Our love story, though, began on a warm summer evening at the Village Butterfly Festival. Butterflies! Everyone would gather in the afternoon and stay well into the night to watch the butterflies spread across the town. We decorate the buildings with colorful flower banners and shops would stock up on sweets to attract them. Everywhere you looked, you could see villagers dressed in colorful outfits adorned with their favorite flora in hopes of getting the butterflies to land on them. The scene unfurls before you transforming the cold cabin into a lively village square. I was enjoying myself fully, as I did every year. And I didn't think it could get much better than that, and was ready to call it a night. But then I saw someone. Their beautiful white outfits seemed to glow in the moonlight, and a crowd of colorfully dressed party goers, they stood out, a moth amongst a sea of butterflies. I couldn't help be drawn to you. <laughs> that sounds like something straight out of a fairy tale. Claude grins, and we get blushy. It felt like one. And you remember it this clearly? He motioned to the vivid scenery that materialized around the two of you as Claude told his story. He bends down and plucks a small flower sprouting from the ground, rolling it between his fingers as he smiles fondly, seemingly caught up in his own reminiscing. He looks back up at you and tucks the flower behind your ear. How could I not? Aww. Your face flushes. To cut a long story short, it wasn't easy after that. We had spent the night talking and dancing and everything just felt so easy, so right. But, but there was something else wasn't there. My family, for one, they didn't enjoy me being with you. Said you weren't trustworthy and you'd only bring trouble with you. They were so close-minded. They relied on the village gossip more than any good impression you could have ever given them. He combs a hand through his hair in frustration at the memory, a crease forming between his scrunched brows. He looked at you, and upon seeing your face, his expression softened back into a smile. But obviously that sort of thing wasn't going to put the end to us. Despite the challenges we face, the disapproval of the community, the distance that often separated us, our love grew stronger. We found solace in stolen moments, secret rendezvous under the stars, and exchanged heartfelt letters. Your heart ached as you imagined the tender scenes described by Claude, longing for connection you can barely remember. For a moment, it feels as though his memories are your own, though they fall away like sand between your fingers every time you try to get close. try to process what's happening. I mean, I guess we should ask you this too, I would assume. What happened to us? Why did I reincarnate and you didn't? That's a mystery even to me. A curse seems to have fallen over souls, trapping me in stasis and you in a cruel cycle of rebirth and misfortune. Neither case sounds good. We didn't just die and fail to move on. Something has tampered with us and we need our memories to figure out exactly what that was. But I have faith that we will find a way to bring the truth to light together. Determined to uncover the secrets of your past, you nod resolutely and your eyes never leaving Claude's face. We will, Claude. 
I promise. And time to process what has occurred. It's just... Everything you've told me, it feels so real, yet I can't remember yet any of it. I feel like I should, but I can't. You wipe away a frustrated tear, your hands trembling slightly. You hadn't realized how worked up you had gotten over this. I can understand how difficult this must be for you, but please don't lose hope. We will find a way to bring your memories back. Promise. As Claude speaks, you can't look away from his face. Every word he utters resonates deep within your heart, unearthing a growing attachment to this man from your forgotten past. There is no denying it anymore. This was real. Tell me more, please, about us, our love, anything else that might help me remember. You lean in closer. Your eyes never leaving claws as you hang on to his every word. Of course. There was a time when we would spend hours walking through the countryside, hand in hand. And I'd tell you the stories I'd made up. Fantastical ones filled with daring adventures and otherworldly creatures. <laughs> he would even make me restart if there wasn't a happy ending. Happy endings are never that cut and dry, not even in stories. You can find happiness in any end if you know where to look for it. I mean, do we want to go with this one? I had a point. There's always room for a happy ending, even in a sad story. Just because you lose something doesn't mean that everything else suddenly lost importance. You can always find happiness somewhere. All you have to do is want to find it. Claude grins. That's exactly what he would say to me when I complained about it. I'm helping you gain some perspective was your go-to justification. He snorts. The glowing flames comp comprising... <laughs> He snorts, the glowing flames comprising his body roar to light with each laugh. You can't help but smile at him. It was nice to see him generally happy and unburdened, even if for a moment. Claude sighs, looking away as if to avoid your gaze. The world seems so full of possibilities when we're together. That sounds beautiful. It was... And even though we face countless obstacles, our love always found a way to triumph over adversity. Yet an unbreakable bond that not even the darkest storms could shatter. His heart churns with joy and sadness, longing for that connection you once shared with Claude. Your mind races with questions and doubts. But at the same time, you feel inexplicably drawn to him. Claude... I believe you. I don't know why, but something inside me tells me that your saying is true. I want to remember. I need to remember. I know you will. And when the day comes, we'll be together again. Just as we were in the past. At least, I hope so. You nod resolutely. It's just, I want to help. But it feels like I'm reaching out for something beyond my grasp. It's frustrating. You clench your fist, feeling an ache in your chest. I understand, and I'm here to help you through this journey, every step of the way. This isn't your fight alone. Not anymore. You look into Claude's eyes, finding... <laughs> You look into Claude's eyes, finding comfort in his presence and a sense of emptiness when you think of the match burning out. You shake your head, trying to focus on the present moment. I won't let this hold me back anymore. I need to remember the truth. <laughs> I admire your determination. We'll get there together. You take a deep breath, 
steadying yourself as you mentally prepare for the challenges ahead. Thank you, Claude. Your support means everything to me. No! Oh no. I think the match's essence is fading. As the sense of the match's smoke weakens, your heart sinks at the thought of losing Claude again, even if for a short time. The world seems to grow colder. Promise me we'll find our way back to each other again, no matter what. Promise. And he disappears once more. With those words, Claude's image dies with the match's last flame, and you're left alone with your thoughts. You turn from the heap, grappling with the emptiness Claude's aptness leaves you feeling a new sense of determination to bring your past back to life. Finally, all the tension that you had built up today finally comes crashing down on you in response to Claude's absence. No matter how much you breathe in, it feels as though no air is entering your lungs. As much as you want to pull out another matchstick right away, you know you won't be able to handle it physically or mentally. But still, waiting another day seems like too long at this point in your quest for answers. Claude, I'll be back. Just give me a few hours. You sink into a chair and take another deep breath. It was time yet again. You pull out a matchstick from its box, not even bothering to look down as you strike it. It's surprisingly easy to fall into this routine. Unorthodox of a routine as it may be. Hello again. Claude's image soon forms, though he's already speaking before he's completely materialized. Seems like he's too is beginning to get used to this. You're not sure if that's a good thing. I think I have an idea. You snap from your thoughts and look at him. What is it? Well, follow me. Woo. Claude moves towards the door, his vaguely opaque legs striking in awkward steps. Leave? Are you crazy? Let me get my snow gear. I mean... Yeah? Oh, of course. How could I forget? <laughs> he laughs awkwardly and you feel a twinge of pity. It must be hard remembering these things after being dead for so long. Maybe not from the weather, but can ghosts feel cold at all? Claude waits patiently by the door. Claude waits patiently by the door as you move to equip your heavy snow coat, snowproof mitt shoes, mittens, and... Wait, where's your hat? Looking for this? Claude holds up your beanie, smirking. <laughs> Come here, silly. Why are they wearing so cute? <laughs> you walk towards Claude, staying still as possibly. What? You walk towards Claude, staying still as you possibly can while he places the hat on your head. Your breath hitches as he leans in, and you really do feel a bit silly when he pulls away moments later. You chalk up your blush to the heat that emanates off of him, of course. <laughs> if some ghosts can feel cold, I don't think Claude is one of them. There, all done. Are you ready? Yep, ready. You walk outside. The cold air immediately slapping you in the face. I hate the cold. Claude gives you a sympathetic look. Who doesn't? Now oh, follow me, please. You follow Claude through the surrounding woods. He steps illuminating a path for you to follow. Something wrong, Selfie Clark? Oh no, it's just... I've never been in a place like this before. I guess I... Really never took the time to explore anywhere outside of the cabin. Kind of regretting it now. You gaze at the serene landscape, the endless expanse of snow-covered trees stretching before you. 
the cold air nips at your cheeks, leaving you flushed and rosy. There's always a first time for everything. Claude reaches out, gently taking your hand in his own, the face through yours slightly, and though you can feel the warm pressure of his touch, the bitter reminder of his ghostly state chills you. How it must feel to remain in a world where your presence holds barely as much bearing on it as a fleeting breeze and the flick of a flame. To lose the capacity to need but retain the need to want. To be stuck watching time pass on without being allowed to move with it. To touch someone but never quite hold on to them. No wonder he was so insistent on all no wonder he was so insistent on all of this. You can't fault him. He would be desperate for freedom, too. That's right. I can't fail Claude. You shake your head and resume your conversation, a burning resolve to save not just yourself warming you. Yeah, I guess you're right. As you walk further into the woods... The snow crunches beneath your boots as tall and ancient trees stand watch, casting long shadows across the ground. The world around you seems to be in hibernation, bidding its time until spring's return. Claude, what about these woods are so special? It's hard to explain, but this place is magical. Time works differently here like a still pond that branches from an ever-flowing stream. We used to sing We used to sneak down here, and I figured out of all our old spots, this could be the most likely to stir up memories. Sometimes it helps to see something for yourself rather than just having faith in what you're being told. A piece of the past that has survived to the present? A bridge between your old life and the world you live in now. You nod, understanding the allure of the frozen forest. You feel as if part of you that you have left here had finally found its way back, knocking down mental barriers that previously kept you disconnected from Claude. Claude, you feel so much closer, so much more familiar. I can see why you'd like it here. As you continue to walk hand in hand, you stop suddenly in your tracks. You see them. Memories, not clods for once, but your own. They come in flashes, making you flinch with each passing vision. Claude, I think I remember something. Claude stops in his tracks and takes your other hand, setting you. His face serious. I've got you, Selfie. So just focus on the memories. Tell me, what do you see? The woods. These woods. I'm, I'm running. Some, someone's chasing me. Who's chasing you, Selfie? Your heart is hammering in your chest. It feels as though it's going to burst. You gasp for air but find nothing. All you can seem to fill your lungs is smoke. The villagers. You sink down to the floor, the hateful face of those you once saw as your friends bearing down at you. Claude, I don't think I can do this. Selfie, you have to, please. You clench your fists, nails digging into flesh until the snow under your ears turns pink from the freshly drawn blood. Not even the stinging pain can pull you from the cacophony of shrieks, curses lived at you combined with the clanging of metal. They're surrounding me, shouting, yelling at me. They're, they're accusing me. Accusing you of what? Witchcraft. God damn it, always the fucking witchcraft. <sighs> always, always, god damn. Can someone not just be different and not be a called to be accused? Ah! Witchcraft. What? 
They're going to kill me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die, Claude. So now the question is, did we actually do witchcraft to keep ourselves prolonged? Or is that just villagers just making assumptions? You grab at him, ignoring how the heat of the flames burn at your bleeding hands. Claude. Selfie. You stop. Your voice grows quiet, barely a whisper. You stare blankly at the frozen ground. But I'm going to die, aren't I? Because... Because... You stutter, the words struggling to get past your frozen lips. Because... They're right. The two of you sit on the ground, silent, spun like this for a few moments. Neither of you willing to first to speak. You've managed to get your heart rate back to a somewhat normal level, though to still being irregular. A light layer of sweat coats your brow despite the freaking cold that surrounds you. Maybe you pushed yourself too far. Like it or not, you were still sick. You must have been terrified. I... I didn't know. You can't help but shrink away from Claude when he turns to you. What did he think of you now that the truth was revealed? He still loves you, whether or not you're a witch, okay? <laughs> you look down, embarrassed. This is Claude, your Claude, the same Claude who made you help him find a proper burial spot for a rat that was found sneaking bites of the baker's stock. Crying about how it deserved to eat better than stay a loaf when it was alive. Aww. You'd never wish harm for anyone or anything, no matter how view others view them. You so desperately wanted to believe that this doesn't change anything, but you're scared. Claude startles when you... <laughs> Claude startles when you flinch from his touch, but quickly recovers, setting his hands in his laps and keeping a respectful distance from you. He looks at you with sympathy and smiles sadly. Sorry, remembering all this must have been a lot, but you're safe now. Am I really? I don't know how reassuring saying this is, but I never ever hurt you, Selfie. I may have been raised by people who refuse to accept you, but like hell, I would ever think like them. If you're a witch, then I still won't hesitate to stand by your side. The only thing that this changes is how we approach our problem. <sighs> you take a deep breath, trying to shake off the chilling visions from the past. Right. Focus. You cling to Claude's hand, seeking solace in his reassuring touch. You don't need to hide anymore. With Claude, you can embrace the truth of yourself and your past. Thank you, Claude. The memories. They're painful, but something else has come back to me. Something warmer, making me want to remember it spite it all. Your eyes shimmer with unshed tears breath hitching as you remember the tender moments shared with Claude in your past life. Claude's eyes widen and he leads in closer. I can see in your eyes, <laughs> you, you remember. You nod slowly, your heart aching with the bittersweet memories of a love that had been tragically cut short, its mysterious end taunting you. You are so close, but you need to remember more. Yeah. I can see it. All those times we would seek out after the sun was set. You keep me coming back with those stories you told. Always making me get invested just to leave off with a cliffhanger at the end of the night. <laughs> Jeez, you drove me crazy. <laughs> Hopefully in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wave him off playfully. How about you? A couple centuries is nothing to sniff at. You still remember that time we got caught in the rain? Oh man, we were drenched. 
I can't believe you convinced me to stay. My favorite shoes were left drying for a week. Hmm. But whose idea was it to keep dancing again? Oh yeah, I remember that too. It was yours. <laughs> Claude barks out a laugh. Okay, okay, you got me there. But in my defense, I was watching history in the making. You spinning around with your hair plastered to your face, not caring about anything but the moment for once. Not something you see every day. Please, I look ridiculous. You look beautiful. You still are. Even more so. You feel lighter. Almost as though your bond is growing stronger. A weight lifted by the resurgence of a connection that had transcended time and space. It sort of feels... Just like how you were before you felt sick. Maybe even better than back then. Although you tether between illness and wellness, you can't deny that a taste that life has left you ravenous for more. It's almost like I can feel it again. Like it's just within reach. Claude pulls you closer his warm embrace providing solace from the storm of emotions raging inside of you. Those moments were real, and they mattered. The accusations against you were false and unjust, but our love was true. You gaze into Claude's eyes, feeling your senses swell and crash like a tidal wave. Anyways, our little walk down memory lane isn't over yet. This way, please. <gasps> what is this area? It looks cute. <laughs> Claude leads you deeper into the woods, your breath visible in the cold air. The snow crunches between your feet as you approach a small clearing in the trees. As you step into the open space, you're greeted by a breathtaking sight. This, <laughs> this is beautiful. The clearing is adorned with frozen. The clearing is adorned with frostbitten roses. Their petals glisten like dark jewels under the winter sun. The whimsical sight tugs at your heart, stirring something within you. I hope you'd like it. This whole... This place... This place holds something. God damn it, can you read? <laughs> This place holds special meaning. You feel a sudden rush of memories flooding your mind. This time you're ready and do little, more than flinch at the onslaught of colors and voices. Images flash before your eyes, dancing among the flowers in full bloom, hand in hand with Claude. Quite outings, picking blossoms, the perfect material for floral arrangements and crowns. No matter the season, no matter the year, this clearing offered you a respite from the overbearing aspects of busy village life. We were here together, and <laughs> we were so happy. Yeah, we were, and that happiness was real. Your heart smelled. <laughs> what the fuck does it smell? Your heart swells with emotion. But the sweet memories are quickly tainted. But the rec but the sweet memories are quickly tainted by the recollection of being hunted by the townspeople. Their faces twisting with fear and anger, shouting accusations that they surrounded you. They all looked the same in the smoke that engulfed you. But it was short lived. And so were we. As you stand in the clearing, surrounded by the frozen beauty of the roses, you feel a mix of emotion, love, and loss and determination to hold on to that bond you shared with Claude. Suddenly, you double over in agony. Your heart feels as though it's on fire. My heart, I feel like I'm being torn apart. Your eyes fill with tears. 
reflecting the moonlight that filters through the ancient trees surrounding you. Selfie. As you recall the fear etched on your face during the moments leading up to your execution, your heart aches again and you shudder involuntarily. I thought I would never see you again. Claude smiles bitterly, though... Though his ear seems more directed towards himself than you. And yet, here I am. Always a bit too late. God. He shakes his head. But I'll follow you through lifetimes if I have to. He said it. <laughs> you stand there in silence for a moment. You breathe deeply. Allowing your shared past to intertwine with the present, drawing courage from your renewed connection. We survived so much, it took us being apart for them to even stand a chance. That's right. You inch closer to Claude, feeling the weight of your past being lifted by the unshaking devotion you have for each other. In this forest, where the greenery never lost its vibrance and the ruse and the rose bloom even in the harshest cold a love that transcends time rekindles the spark of hope you once hid away centuries ago it just i can't shake the feeling we need to find a way to make our reunion last forever your memories continue to resurface, each one intensifying your determination to stay together permanently. Like you said, we've overcome so much already. We'll find a way, I promise. You gaze into Claude's deep brown eyes, searching for re reassurance. You're right, we've come so far to be separated again. Let's leave this all behind and move on, side by side like it should have been. As you walk deeper into the woods, a shot of confidence reinvigorates your heart, knowing that you can face whatever challenges lie ahead, as long as you're with Claude. This time, we'll forge our own path and no one will stand in our way. Are we not forgetting that we have limited matchsticks? Gabe, you were really trying to trick me into thinking, oh, everything's fine. It's not fine. We're in impending doom. Because what are we? We've used three matches. There was eight. We have five left. Okay, Gabe? You really, you really have me going. I know this is not going to end sweetly, maybe. I don't know. Don't trick me into a false sense of comfort. <laughs> Together, you venture out of the clearing, leaving behind the ghostly whispers of your past. Thank you, Claude, for everything. Claude turns to you, reaching out. His hands fall through yours without even giving you the smallest sensation of a warm touch. Yeah. Your eyes follow his arm, widening, widening as you see it slowly begin to lose God damn it. Your eyes follow his arm, widening as you see it slowly begin to lose opacity. Claude, you're fading away again, even faster than before. Don't panic. It's probably because we're outside. The flames probably just weak from all the moisture in the air. You still have some more matches in the cabin. Despite his attempts to reassure you, you reach into your coat. Oh no. Well, are, are we panicking because it's in the cabin? Or are you panicking because you lost it? <laughs> Give me the fright. Despite his attempts to reassure you, you reach into your coat pocket. Patting yourself down as you desperately search for a matchbox you know isn't there. Oh my gosh, no, I... That's a lot to wonder. Your mind races with a million different thoughts. Why are the matches getting weaker and weaker? 
Has he been losing too much smoke? Does the distance from the matchbox cause the magic to weaken? Why didn't you think of any of this through? Hey, hey. Claude's voice cuts through your frenzied thoughts like a knife. You look back at him, this time being able to see almost completely through his figure. I'll be fine. My soul follows you. No matter where you go, I'll be there. So please don't worry. With each word, you can hear his voice become quieter, his physical presence slowly disappearing. And when you're ready, you know how to reach me. No, you disappear once more, and we've gotten quite a lot of details in that section. Surprisingly, you give us a lot of information, but it felt not overwhelming. So good job writing. Seconds after he finishes his sentence, Claude. <laughs> Seconds after he finishes his sentence, Claude is gone. It is as if he was never there. No trace of his existence left behind. It's terrifying to think about. You stare at the place where he'd been for what like feels like ages. Your eyes welling up. Maybe it was the reaction your body had to the harsh glaze of the snow. Can you speak English, please? <laughs> you stare at the place where he had been for what felt like ages. Your eyes welling up. Maybe it was a reaction your body had to the harsh gales of snow being thrust at you. Or maybe, Ka or maybe Claude's absence really did have an effect on you. Knowing you can't stay outside forever, you trudge back in towards your cabin, resolute in your mission to find answers. The dimly lit interior casts eerie shadows on the wall. You pace back and forth, your hands fidgeting as you mumber. Your hands fidgeting as you mutter under your breath. The room feels suffocating, and yet you can't bring yourself to step outside for a moment of respite. Thoughts of Claude consume you entirely, like an unquenchable fire raging in your chest. There has to be a way. I can't lose Claude. I won't let us be torn apart. Not again. I don't have time to sleep. This ends now. You make a beeline towards the matchbox on the countertop. Driven by emotion rather than the reason, you pull out another match and set it to a blaze. As Claude reappears, concern etched upon his face, you force a smile. That was quicker than usual. Are you alright? You seem a bit troubled. It's nothing really, just been thinking a lot. Claude raises an eyebrow, sensing the tension in the air. Care to share? Maybe I can help. You hesitate before looking intensely into Claude's eyes. <laughs> Mustering the courage to voice your fears. You look down quickly, tears welling up in your eyes as emotion overwhelms you. Keep it together, Selfie. I don't know if I'm ready to move on. <laughs> God, sorry, but that sounds so selfish. Claude reaches out, gently placing a hand to your shoulder. Selfie, if these past couple of days had been anything to go by, you're anything but selfish. I mean, you dropped everything to humor a guy that jumped out of matchstick claiming he was your soulmate. I've had years to process this. You've had less than a few days. Give yourself some credit. But that's exactly it. I... Getting these memories back and being able to see you again. Only to say goodbye? I hate to admit how much I dread solving all this. I want you to be free. I really do. But I also feel like the moment you leave, I'll have nothing to come back to. You actually fiddle with the hem of your sleeve. I don't know how to describe it. It sort of feels like I'm dying. Not in a physical sort of way, but like 
there's two of me in my head and with every memory gained, the me from this life gets weaker. Does that make sense? I sound crazy, don't I? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I didn't realize that that's how you felt. Selfie, I, I honestly didn't want to say goodbye either, but I figured it would be selfish to drag you back with me. Your head snaps up to look him in disbelief. You bite your lip, rolling down the reckless hope that's bubbled up, and instead elect to confirm that you heard right. Really? He slowly holds up one hand and crosses a finger of his heart and promise. Really and truly. That's, that's a huge relief. But how do we make that happen? What if we solve everything but fate still has other plans for us? What if this is our only chance to stay together? Selfie, I love you. And nothing can change the fact that I'll do anything to preserve this love. I just... I haven't figured out what we can do to accomplish that. Even in this form, my knowledge has limits. A thought, sparked by one of your freshly rediscovered memories, skirts across your mind. Maybe there is a way for us to ensure we stay together. No matter what. You stride to your bookshelf, scanning... What? <laughs> okay, um, did we not want to mention that we had freaking tomes and grimoires in this cabin? <laughs> Excuse me? But we just, just be like, hey, this bookshelf has these. <laughs> then again, maybe we just didn't realize that what these books were when we were cleaning. Sure. <laughs> You stride over to your bookshelf, scanning through the spines of ancient tomes and mystical grimoires. How lucky that your collection from your first life was kept so well preserved. Conveniently, but hey, for the sake of plot, yeah. Your hands tremble as you reach for one, its pages filled with spells, rituals, and arcane knowledge. Bingo. What are you planning, Selfie? I've heard of people making deals with supernatural forces and performing rituals to secure their love. Maybe, maybe there's something in here that can help us do exactly that. Claude appears concerned, but can't fully hide his intrigue at your desperate suggestion. Are you sure about this? Messing with this sort of things can be dangerous. You should know all too well. You bite your lip, but despite the risk, your desperation fuels your determination. You grip the delicate book and look like a look like a cow. <laughs> you grip the delicate book and look up look You grip the delicate book and look up at him with desperate gleam in your eye. I can't bear the thought of losing you, Claude. I'll do whatever it takes to keep us together. But still, I don't want it to be at the cost of your well-being. I'm just afraid. We don't know exactly what will happen once everything's done. What if we make the wrong choice or end up losing each other forever? Or what if the matches run out and I live to regret not taking this chance when I could have? I sound crazy, I know. I can't explain this feeling myself, but I trusted you, so please have some faith in me. He sighs but nods his head. After all, you had taken a chance on him. It was the least he could do in, to return the favor. Flipping through the book, you search desperately for anything that can help you. A ritual, a spell, anything. There's something here, you know it. Something that your past self had left as a failsafe. Finally, you manage to gather a few options. They aren't perfect, but they're a start. You hesitate, your eyes locked on the text scrut. Your eyes locked on into the uh, Your eyes locked on to the text scribed upon the page as you prepare to discuss your findings with Claude. There are a few options that come across this book, but none of them are without their own risk and consequences. 
Your fingers tremble as you hold the pages, your eyes scanning over the text in hopes of finding a more ideal solution you had missed in your first pass. What sort of consequences? Well, some involve invoking spirits or making deals with supernatural entities. However, the outcomes are uncertain whether you consult another being, one wrong move, and they can con you out of what you want and put you in an even worse position than you where you started from. Claude shudders at your words. Even his flame seems to grow paler as the thought of paying the price for a botched deal. Worse than this? Well, how about the other options? They're rituals, but they require equal exchange. Considering what we want to accomplish, we have to make an incredibly huge sacrifice for it to stand a chance at all. Besides all that, I might have my memories back, but my body is weak and I don't have the same experience as I did in my first life. I might buckle under the pressure if I have to act as a conduit. You feel a stinging, you know all too well, and sensation you became acquainted with even before entering this whirlwind adventure with Claude. You're weak. There's no way around that simple fact. As much as these days spent reminiscing and piecing together the mystery of your past offered a change of pace to break your monotonous routine, you could never escape the reminder of how your body was continuing to fail and wither away beneath you. And here you are, on the verge of a breakthrough only to hit another wall because of your illness. You hate it, and you hate having to admit it out loud. I... I want to be with you, Claude, but I'm not sure if I'd be strong enough to do any of these right. Selfie, don't beat yourself up. Everything about this is risky. Maybe this is a sign that this sort of magic isn't the way. Whatever it is, we need to consider all possibilities before making a rash decision. You shake your head. No, oh, this is the only way out. As you flip through the pages of the ancient book, searching for a solution, you hit a dog-deer page you had skipped past in your first run through. On it, you notice a familiar image of a box of matches, not unlike yours. A smile begins to form on your face as you skim through the text. A ritual that instead uses a burning match to seal your fate together. This might be it. And then you see what is required to be lost. Find anything new? Nope, I guess this was a dead end after all. Ooh, something is going to be discovered in this. Curious. I am curious of what's happening on this. Because clearly that dog ear page was talking about something. Mm. You set aside the book, but say nothing of what you've read to Claude. Hmm. Claude hates this stuff. It won't do him any good to know the specifics of this if we don't go through with it. It's purely a last resort. It's probably for the best, but Selfie, I think that maybe you should take some time for yourself. I know we're writing on a tight schedule, but it'd be pointless if you collapse from stress in the process. I've pushed you too far. An expression flickers across his face, and your heart you feel your heart sink once you recognize it. He looks so guilty. Was he regretting contacting you? Was he going to turn around and give in at the last moment, all in the name of keeping you supposedly safe? I've had centuries to think over this, and you've barely had a day. You don't have to carry this burden on your shoulder alone. Alone. I don't want to be left here all alone again, Claude. You can't just come here and give me all these memories before abandoning me. Selfie, you're right. This has all been unfair of me, and I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you like this. I 
I just wanted, I just wanted to see you again, to make things right. Well, here's your chance. If we do this, we could fix things and never have to be separated. I'd be never alone again. But is it worth risking everything for the chance to stay together? You hesitate, struggling to find an answer that feels right. Your heart races, anxiety creeping in. You swallow hard, fighting back tears. Sophie, I'm sorry. Claude, it's fine. I'm, I'm sorry, too. You wave your hand in dismissal. You're on the verge of a breakthrough. Now here you are exploding on the very guy you were so desperate to keep. This, this isn't healthy. I think I just need some rest. Let's it take some time to think about it. We'll make the best decision we can and we'll do it together. Claude smiles sadly and you finally notice how weary he looks. His eyes are sunken and his shoulders remain stiff with tension. This conflict must be taking a toll on him as well. That sounds good, Selfie. You don't even turn to wait and watch for Claude to fade away. You simply leave. You flee into your bedroom, running on frustration and embarrassment. You hadn't meant to say those things aloud. But you couldn't help it. Shutting the door and flopping on your bed, you pull out a book again, flipping until you reach the page with the matchbook. Look at the mess you've made for yourself, Selfie. You sigh, rereading every single line of the page you came across. Your mind wanders as you begin to lose focus. Claude was right. Nothing was good could come from you making a rash decision, but you can't help it. How was anyone supposed to act in your position? Getting brought in on something much bigger than yourself only to get attached and have it all yanked from under you. You have a right to be a little intense right now. This whole situation is intense. But still... Maybe you need to take a step back from this, even if just for a few moments. I don't like the person I'm turning into. Is it really so selfish to want more time? Since we picked the top one before, pick the top one again? Because, I mean... This one we back off, this one we try to do more. Pick it. Is it really so selfish to want? Ay! Is it really so selfish to want more time? To risk everything for just a few more moments with Claude? Isn't that what love is? Taking risk even when the odds are stacked against you. The page beneath you darkens, and it takes a moment to realize you're crying. Now that the frustration has faded, all that's left is fear and sadness. Didn't he say we were willing to risk it all for each other? Wiping your face, you finally take a moment to breathe like Claude suggested. Laying on your bed. You go over the memories you've recovered of your previous life, as well as those that you've made in this life. After a while, you feel substantially better. Not perfect, but better. Claude, I'm doing this because I care about us. You turn and see yourself in the mirror. Your reflection has never looked so clear before. Maybe this wasn't the best decision. I'm worried now because the whole thing of risk it for the biscuit could actually burn the biscuit. Hmm. <laughs> you know what you need to do. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. Well, at least. Well, did you make a save? Fuck, I forgot I make it save. No. <laughs> well, we made a decision. Gotta live with it. You haven't gotten much sleep. Wait, you know what? Screw it. Time travel. I need to time travel. 
time travel for the sake of reuniting past lovers. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Now we're back. You hadn't gotten much sleep the night prior, though that came to no surprise as you lay restless in bed. You tossed and turned, running through your options over and over again, until nothing felt real anymore. One thing, though, was certain. No matter what you pick, you'd have to sacrifice something else in return. And so, here we are, watching the sun begin to set as its vibrant orange light bathes the cabin in warm, fiery hues. Your bed is made, dishes washed, firewood restocked. Everything is neat and tidy to allow for a clean exit. After all, you're not one to break promises. No point stalling any longer. You walk over to your dining table, picking up the, the infamous box of matchsticks that had changed your life's course in a mere few days. It's substantially lighter than before, only holding a few mere two matchsticks now. You make that number fall further as you take a match and strike it. So I don't know if I make good choices, so hi, Claude. <laughs> Selfie. Claude. He breaks out into a smile. He could never hold a grudge for long. In the rare occurrence where the two of you would fight, he'd be always first to give in and try to make up. Though, now you figured it's your turn to take on that role. Listen, before you say anything, I just want to tell you I'm sorry for yesterday. I was stressed, but that didn't mean you weren't either. I just, regardless of how things end, I don't want our last memories here to be us fighting. Selfie, it's alright. No, well, it's not alright. I don't want to brush things under the rug. Not again. Not now. Claude stops, staring at you with wide eyes. And then he smiles, though this time it seems brighter more genuine than the one he greeted you when he appeared. You're right. I guess it's been a nasty habit of mine lately. Apology accepted. But I also want to say sorry. It was so easy to get caught up in something I only dreamed would have happened that I, I neglected everything else. There's a world between a relationship, past or present, and I harmed us both by forgetting that. You smile though it doesn't quite reach your eyes. His words ring true, but awaken you a twinge of guilt at the decision you've settled on. He doesn't know yet how apt his confession is, in more ways than one. Apology accepted. Claude takes a step closer, his eyes filled with a warm understanding, as if he can read your inner thoughts, or how you wish he really could. Do you remember when we first met? We went through so much together. At some point, we just became a reflex to lean on each other whenever something came up. <sighs> He's trying to comfort you. You nod slowly, recalling the countless struggles the two of you had faced, both together and apart. Yeah, I do. We've really been through so much together. And we'll face this decision together, too. No matter what choice you make, now that our love is constant, I believe in your strength and in ours as a pair. I believe in you. I really do. It's hard to keep a smile that's anything but sad. I'm glad. I'll be by your side every step of the way. I, ex <laughs> I had to accept the truth and face the reality of our situation. I need to make a decision that's best for both of us. You gaze at the crackling fire in the fireplace, its warm glow casting shadows on your face. Now, Selfie, what is your decision? You already know the answer. Damn! This is where we go with the choices! <laughs> 
that's emotion. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming this is the more happy thing to do, so we're not gonna be in tears as much. I mean, that does sound like better music. I want to be with you, Claude. I have a ritual that'll just do that. Claude's eyes widen with a mixture of emotions. Shock, joy, and concern. Sophie, I'm so happy to hear that, really. But what about you? What about your life here? What's there to go back to? A hospital bed and a heart monitor? <laughs> no. I think of all this... All this was a build-up just for the sake of meeting you, but... Now you're here. Claude smiles. I'm here. The frosty air clings to the log cabin walls, seeping into your bones. You stand at the center of the room, a breath forming small clouds as you exhale, each one dissipating like the fragments of a fading dream. You can feel the weight of the decision that lays before you, pressing down on your heart like an icy anchor, but you're resolved. Do you trust me? You look up, silently asking for permission as you eyeball the matchbox left on the table. Claude has made his worries about witchcraft and rituals clear before. I do. No going back then. Your trembling hands reach out for the matchbox, fingers brushing against the rough cardboard surface. The cold has numbed your senses, but the gravity of the situation courses through your veins, igniting a fire within you that rivals the chill of the air. If only you could have a little more trust in yourself. Wait, are you sure you're ready for this? As Claude's words cut through the silence, you pause for a moment, feeling the magnitude of what was about to happen. I... you're not. Claude, seeing you falter, gently takes your hand in his own. The warmth from his touch sends shivers down your spine, a stark contrast to the frigid air that surrounds you. Whatever you're feeling, you don't have to face it alone. You won't face it alone. No going back now, right? You glance up at Claude, eyes shimmering with unshred tears. In that moment, you both find solace and comfort in each other's presence. A small reverie from the unforgiving world outside. It's like it doesn't even matter. It doesn't exist to you anymore. Overwhelmed by your emotions, you struggle to find the words that convey your love for Claude. You open your mouth, only to close it again. The eternal conflict evident on your face. God, I've never felt like this before. You're more than just a friend to me, you're everything. As you finally manage to voice your feelings, you feel a strange sense of relief mixed with fear. Claude's eyes soften understand your vulnerability in the moment. I think it goes without saying how deeply I care for you. We'll face whatever comes our way together. I'm just scared, Claude. You fiddle with the matchbox in your trembling hands, feeling the weight of the decision you're about to make. Claude watches you with a sympathetic expression. It's okay to be scared, but remember that no matter what, I'll stand by your side. But remember that no matter what, I'll stand by you. Your eyes meet, and you're struck by the sincerity shining in Claude's gaze. You take a deep breath, trying to steady yourself. His support means everything to me. It's what's given me the strength to face whatever comes next. Your fingers brush against a match, Aware that each one brings you closer to the edge. With tears streaming down your face, you strike it against the box, igniting a small flame and whispering the verse of words you had memorized. Thank you, Claude, for being here with me. 
always. The soft glow of the burning match casts flickering shadows on your faces, reflecting the inner turn reflecting the inner turmoil you both share. As the match burns out and the darkness returns, you know that time is running short. You light another. The second match's flame dances, casting a warm glow that fills the air surrounding you. The light illuminates your faces, revealed in a shared vulnerability as you both stand on the precipice of the unknown. In this fleeting moment, an otherworldly intensity connects you and Claude, drawing you closer than ever before. It's like the world is holding its breath. We're in the eye of the storm now. You gaze into Claude's eyes, finding solace in their depth. Your heart beats in unison as if tethered by an invisible thread. The room around you fades away, leaving only the two of you and the burning match. Can you feel it, Claude? The connection between us? I do, more than anything, and I. I do, more than anything. I want to protect it, and you... As the last wisp of smoke from the spent match dissipate, Claude reaches out and cradles your hand in his face. Claude reaches out and cradles your face in his hands. You lean into the touch, comforted by the warmth of his skin against yours. You're getting closer. Thank you for being my anchor. You don't have to thank me. Just know that my love will never waver. No matter what happens, if you lose everything, you are still always have me, and all we need is each other. Your lips brush together in a tender kiss, bittersweet and filled with longing. As you pull away, the weight of your unspoken words hang heavy in the air. The bond between you deepens, transcending any physical barriers as you prepare to face whatever comes next. You close your eyes, letting it take the place of any other lingering connections your traitor's heart still holds on to. Your hands tremble as you reach the remaining matches, your blood pounding in your ears. One by one, you light every match, your eyes locked onto Claude's, who stands by silently, offering unwavering support. Each match, you feel the ritual eat away at your memories of your current life, the price you've agreed to pay. For every match, I am sealing my fate, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for Claude. I figured it out. This is what love is. Fire! Very romantic. As the last match is lit, you whisper one more string of words, a vow to renounce your life in order to bridge the gap between you and Claude. You finish and toss it into the wooden floor that he had prepared for this moment. Sparks catch. Wait, what? What? Hold up, hold hold up, hold up. Are we setting the whole capital fire? Excuse me? Sparks catch and spread, the fire quickly consuming the dry logs that make up the cabin. With it goes any physical connection that still tethers you to this world, photographs and keepsakes only serving to feed the lustful flames. The crackling sound grows louder, whispered in a secret language only you can understand. Your fate is sealed. The smell of smoke. I never, never realized how thick it could get. It's the scent of our love burning, of our lives changing forever. You laugh a little. Then our love smells terrible. <laughs> Claude snickers, moving closer to you. The room continues to fill with thick acid smoke, making it difficult to breathe. You cough, a tear streaming down your face. Not from the smoke, nor the flames, but from the 
overwhelming emotion coursing through you. You put your remaining energy into choking out your next words. Claude, I love you more than anything. And I love you. We'll face this together, whatever comes next. You take one last look at the burning world around you and the flames licking at the walls and the ceiling of the cabin, creating an inferno that mirrors the passion in your heart. The flickering of regret dampens your fever. This is, this is more than I've imagined. Your friends, your family, your life, they're no longer yours to keep. You had given them up and now they'd be gone forever. You had given them up and... Now they'd be gone forever. You would be gone forever. You glance around the burning room, the blaze casting a haunting glow across your fearful face. With the first lick of a flame, it tears at your flesh. The reality of the situation finally sinks in. You're burning, just like before. Holy shit. <laughs> it hurts. Selfie, I'm right here with you. As Claude speaks, the heat of the fire intenses, yet an inexplicable chill runs down your spine. In the midst of chaos, all you feel is your love for Claude. It numbs you as your body chars. Your eyes meet, and time seems to stand still. The roar of the flames fade into the background as you focus on one another. Without hesitation, Claude pulls you close your bodies pressed together amidst the destructive blaze. As you embrace, your heart beats in unison, defying the chaos surrounding you. Our love will carry us through whatever awaits, my darling. Together, we will rise above this inferno and forge a new future. But quite honestly, you could flip this and make it like a demented story. Even though this is so sweet and wholesome and cute and everything, then... <laughs> Because what was it, back in last January, playing the other game with someone sacrificing themselves with a building collapsing, and now, burning. God, what is with these ghost stories? <laughs> you lose everything, but Claude remains just like he promised, and that's all you need. That was a pretty CG, not gonna lie. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> That's where it ends, my god. We gotta see what else. What else happens if you choose differently? What if we do that? So what happens if we do this? I'm scared. I'm scared, but I have to click it. A dwindling pile of matchsticks on the table seems to mock you, each one representing a potentially stolen moment with Claude. Moments that would all eventually come burning to an end. You feel the guilt of your decision bearing down on you. We can't keep doing this, Claude. Your hand reaches out hesitantly towards the matchbox, trembling ever so slightly. Wait, what do you mean? I can't keep clinging on to something that was never meant to be mine, no matter how much I wish I could. I have to let you go, Claude. We can't keep living in the past and neglecting the present. Our paths converge for a moment again, and for that I'm so happy, but we can't keep lingering here. We'll only keep each other stuck. Claude's gaze falls upon you, his eyes brimming with an ocean of sadness and understanding. His voice is gentle, a tender caress in the silence. I know this is hard for you. Your heart aches at the sight of him, a mixture of love and sorrow filling your chest. You force a smile. You don't know the half of it. Just one more match, one final moment with Claude, and then I'll let him go. It's time to face reality. There are more matches, yes, but you know that once you decide to light another, you won't stop until both they and you are completely burnt out. No, 
you need to end things now. But I can't thank you enough for all the happiness you've given me. I came here with no hope or plans save for the knowledge that I was going to die soon. But then I met you. Again. No matter what happens next, I will never forget the light you brought back into my life. A soft smile graces Claude's lips as he nods, accepting your words. And I will never forget the warmth you brought into my life. I'd spent so many years sitting, waiting in the cold that I'd almost forgotten the feeling. Thank you, Selfie Clark, for helping me remember as well. You steal yourself, your hands balling to fists as your side, determination, sorrow, whirring within you. You take one look at Claude, your eyes filled with a mix of longing and uncertainty. You etch his face into your memory, every detail vivid and clear. You may be letting go, but you won't let yourself forget. This is the last time I'll see his face. The same face that has haunted my dreams and brightened my darkest days. Claude, promise me you won't forget me. Tears well up in your eyes as you struggle to maintain your composure. I could never forget you. His voice is soft and reassuring, filled with the warmth and love that had always been present between you. You muster the courage to meet Claude's gaze. One final time, your heart pounding in your chest. Here goes. One last match. In a swift motion, you strike the match against the box. The flame flickers to life in the darkness, casting a warm glow over your face, reflecting off the tears staining your cheeks. It's so mesmerizing, isn't it? You nod watching as the flame dance gracefully atop the matchstick. The flickering light creates a sense of intimacy between the two of you, as if you're the only ones who exist in this world. You lean into it, allowing for one more moment of unrestrained intimacy. How fitting that our final moments together are bathed in the soft glow of firelight. Claude reaches out to you, and gently places his hand on you. I wish things could have been different. Me too. Your voices are barely above a whisper, the words spoken more for yourself than e for each other. But we know, both know that we can't change the past or the choices we've made. As the flame continues to burn, you feel the heat growing closer to your fingertips. A reminder of the impending end of your time with Claude. Just a few more minutes, and he'll be gone forever. You clutch the burning match tighter, cherishing the fleeting warmth it provided before your world is inevitably plunged back into cold darkness. I don't want to say goodbye. Your heart races, your breathing hitching in your throat as the weight of the moment settles upon you. Then don't. Claude steps closer to you, his hand reaching out as if to touch your cheek. You look up at him wide-eyed and leaning into the gentle touch, cherishing the warmth and comfort offered by Claude's hand, and then you pull away. No, I need to. Selfie, we can work through it. We can work through anything as long as we're together. You just need to let me in, and you don't need to give up on this. Emotions between the two of you. I'm sorry, Claude, but this isn't healthy. Your eyes glisten with tears as you shake your head, your voice wavering with emotion. I'm not giving up on us, Claude. I'm letting us go. I'm letting you go. And I'm letting myself go. You let out an ugly sob, finding it harder to keep a semblance of composure as you say goodbye to the man you've loved across lifetimes. I don't like who I was turning into, willing to do anything or hurt anyone just to stay with you. I was building up my whole self around the idea of being with you, and it's 
sort of feels like you were doing the same. Selfie. Claude, I love you so much. More than words can describe. You hate me all you want, but just know I'm doing this because I love you so much to turn our love into something ugly. Just to keep it. Selfie, I could never, ever hate you. I only wish there was something I could have done that we could have had a different ending. His fiery tears shine with regret, but you know they too will burn away in time. This is for the best. I'll miss you. I know, but I'll be with you in your heart and your memories. Claude pulls back and gives you a cheeky grin. Keep those safe for me, would you? I'll be expecting you to be the one telling stories the next time we meet. You swallow hard, trying to stifle a sob. You weren't nearly as good at him at swallowing your emotions. Will I ever see you again? Claude hesitates, eyes searching through the empty air for something. Anything that might ease your pain. Maybe even pull him from his, too. He finally closes his eyes and sighs in defeat. There'd be no easy answer to this. But still he smiles, genuinely ever the hopeful man you fell in love with. I don't know, but I hope so. Maybe in another lifetime. With those words, you cling to the flickering hope that you may find your way back to each other one day in another lifetime. You better. The dwindling matchstick light flickers, casting eerie shadows on the walls as it grows dimmer. Your hand trembles, feeling the overwhelming weight of your choice. Oh, it's in darkness now. As the match burns closer to its end, the room grows darker, reflecting the uncertainty of your choice. I can't hold on to you forever. Our time together was beautiful, but... And that's something we'll always have. No matter what happens, our memories will never fade. I'll remember you. And if there's any possibility for us to meet again, under better or worse circumstances, I know we will. How? His eyes shine with a love that could not possibly be achieved in a single lifetime. Because we're like moths to a matchstick. We see light, we see warmth, and we just can't help but flutter towards it. He leans in, resting his forehead against yours. His dark brow eyes stare into yours as the two of you stand in silence, breathing in each other's air. Even in the dark, we find our way to each other the moment a spark is lit. Your hands tremble even more, a heart pounding in your chest as the match begins to burn your fingertips. Your eyes fill with determination despite the tears welling up within you. You take a deep breath and muster up all your courage. Goodbye, Claude. You blow out the match, extinguishing the flame. The room falls into darkness, the shadows swallowing everything whole. Farewell, Selfie. Claude is no more. You let out another choked sob and sink to your knees. You don't know how long you stay there, just crying. But eventually your drunk tears run dry, though your sadness doesn't. You force yourself to stand up. Sunlight streams in through the barely curtained windows, blinding you. It's morning. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew that was not the choice to make it start, because that was just more depressing. <laughs> Fuck. Which, what are the... I mean... That sounds like we've gotten both the endings. I guess there's variations. Which... I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck. Damn. 
That was such a journey. <laughs> but hey, that was a march to a matchstick. For a game putting into a game jam. You did so well. I'm emotionally torn, but I'm emotionally like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Fuck. I need to go touch grass. <laughs> oh, so sweet. But now I have to wonder, because it does leave it so perfectly well open-ended that the possibility of so many different concrete endings happening and what else. Oh. <laughs> Just bravo. Beautiful game. But even Happy New Year. Just a great way to start the year with something sentimental, heartbreaking, bittersweet, and joyous <laughs> at the same time. Damn. Excellent. Well, that was our time. Goodbye.